Hello dear ones, it's Alice. <laughs> um, there is one other issue similar to the walk-in issue that I'd like to talk about. Uh, and uh, it, it's similar because it's something that has been attempted in the last few years by some people known as spiritual adepts who have some uh, psychic powers and are, whose auras are characterized by development of the third chakra and the third eye point, similar to the situation uh, described in the walk-ins blog recently. Um, and this has to do with shortcuts, just like walk-ins are kind of shortcuts. Walk-ins are are an attempt by a soul to avoid like the early years of childhood by just stepping into somebody that has already uh, experienced their childhood, see. Um, the difficulty with walk-ins is that um, they circumvent the, 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 uh, the deep understanding and wisdom of our spirit guides who who place us after after we pass on? They place us in exactly the right position at the at the right astrological time and the right birth time. They place us uh, with the right family for the um, solution to our karmic difficulties or for the um, further instruction of our souls according to our soul purpose and our soul missions stated soul missions so so that step from death back into the astral realm and the whole process that it used to take about a thousand years to of soul education soul schooling that took place on the astral plane with the help of all the spirit guides and the higher the higher realms. That process is, is shortcut and like circumvented by the walk-in process, see? So the thing to do, the thing to do is to just let go and let God, after we pass on, do what God does, because God does it better. God does it better than our tiny egos, you know? So that was an aside. Now, I'd like to get back to this other issue. <laughs> um, so, in the early years of the Ascension, I noticed uh, a process that was going on in the astral realm. And um, what it was, was there were was uh, a number, quite a number, of spiritual adepts who did not really feel comfortable with the Ascension process. And they, what they wanted to do was to, to find a way, they, they thought they wouldn't make it through for whatever reason. And so they, what they wanted to do was to find a way to, to make it through without going through the necessary soul evolutionary steps to do so, a shortcut, right? So what I experienced one time, long ago, was a kind of a, an astral um, grafting that happened. I was almost asleep. And, and, I, and over the course of a few nights, I was astrally grafted with, first, the first attempt was grafting into me the bad qualities of the, the uh, spiritual adepts who, um, who felt that these qualities would prevent their ascension. So that was the first thing that happened. I received three, three transplants of what were, what were considered to be on the astral plane the bad qualities, right? Like in one case it was a sexual drive, which they felt was overbearing. And in another case it was something else. It was, it was three separate things. So, so remembering what Jeffrey Allen said, uh, he's a spiritual counselor, and he said, if you find anything in your auric field, it's yours to transform. And I always thought that was pretty good information. <laughs> Very self-empowering, isn't it? And, and Peggy Black says the same thing. She says, transform all the bad things with love. No matter whether they're your, your energy or somebody else's energy, transform everything with love. So there I was in a relatively uninformed state. <laughs> and I could feel the resonance of these, these, these uh, body elementals or whatever it was that had been like 
uh, shifted or projected into my aura by what you might call um, uh, astral surgery. I guess that's what you'd call it. It was very ingenious, actually, on the part of these people. <laughs> but it didn't work because remembering what my guides told me, what my, my spiritual counselors had told me, what I did was I concentrated one at a time on this projected energy and I changed it into my own um, energy of love and joy and light. And, and over time, it was completely transformed. And so that which had been projected upon me was, was completely transformed to my own energy. I'm telling you this in case this may have happened to you back then. I know that the experiment was unsuccessful, but there may be others who have this kind of projected, uh, large pieces of projected astral matter. What do you call it? Um, what did they used to call it? They had a special name for astral matter in the old days. And um, so if you're in this position, know that the only thing holding you back from transforming that energy is, is your own, is your own um, willpower. You can, you can change it any time. You, you have the power to do that in alignment with God. So just change it. That's all. And I don't think it's happening anymore. I hope not. So that's one shortcut, spiritual adept shortcut. And then there is another one where, uh, and this happened a little later on, and it, it was also a failure, but, but you may have experienced it yourself, in which case I'll tell you how I dealt with it. It's pretty much the same way. There were those that, that felt that they were passing on, and they were spiritual adepts, and they were pretty sure they weren't going to make the extension process, so they picked people that were, they felt were pretty good bets for the ascension process, and they, they like projected themselves into those people in a kind of a nuclear way, like a, not, not like, like a walk-in, not like how a walk-in descends into the astral body, but, but like they just somehow projected their essence into, into, into me very small, very tiny, like maybe they used that psychic power of, of greatly reducing yourself. Do you know that one? Don't even bother with it. Patanjali says, forget about it. <laughs> but maybe that's what they did. And so I actually experienced them, uh, their thought forms floating around in my bloodstream. And so it was a bit of a freak out. <laughs> <laughs> and then I thought, you know, I'll just transform all this with love too. And as it turned out, what happened was they were uh, experiencing, uh, what do they call it, uh, anxiety attacks. They were still in physical form and they were just projecting their, their consciousness into my bloodstream. So, so, ha, huh, transform all with love. If you find it within you, transform it with love. And if you're a spiritual adept, I'd just like to say that the tried and true method uh, arranged by God for us all, for our soul's journey and for our soul's pro progression, is really the thing to rely on. Not our own, like, intellect, which is insulated from, from the cosmic mind and, and not as sharp, maybe sharper than some people's, you know, but not as sharp as we might wish it to be, you know. And along these lines, I would suggest... Um, for those who are considering shortcuts, who are spiritual adepts, uh, truly, I mean, just keep this in mind because I know it will probably not ring too well with you, but truly, the next step is to surrender to the will of God. Let go and let God. So, if you ever reach that point where you're willing to align with the will of God, you can just say to yourself, I align my will my heart and my mind, with the great will, the great heart, and the great mind of God. It's a lifesaver, honestly, and it will get you through this process. All right, everyone, take care. Love you lots. <laughs>